Hi everyone. Today I'm making the Moon Gazer pendant. There's lots involved in this pendant. I'm starting with some scoring and folding. Then we're going to do some soldering, texturing metal, some stone setting. I have a tip coming up in the stone setting that is really useful, so stay tuned. The first part I'm working on is the frame of the pendant. You can see I am notching the corners and once they are quite close to the front edge I bend them into 90 degree angles and this is going to form the outside of the pendant. I use the parallel pliers, it helps keep everything nice and straight and square and I measure one side using the dividers and transfer that to the other side. To create these notches I'm using a square file or what some people would call a four corner file. This gets in there and creates the perfect angle to create a 90 degree corner. This honeycomb block is great for holding the frame in position as I solder it. You can see adding flux to the corners and now I'm going to solder it. This project entails quite a lot of soldering. As I raise the temperature of the silver piece, I carefully position the solder with my pick. I spend a little time marking out clouds with my scribe uh, before I pierce it with my saw. This cloud measures about 5mm across. If people would like plans of this pendant or any of the other pieces I've made, uh, leave a comment below and it's something I might consider doing in the future. While soldering these on, they do look like I'm making stud earrings, but these are actually going to be little rivet posts for attaching the clouds to the, to the backing plate. Once again, awesome camera work by myself. Getting my hand in the way there. So I have a little rule for myself when I'm soldering something like this. If I'm keeping the inside of the backing plate, I will introduce the solder from the outside. I wanted to create a mountain scape. So in order to do this, I tried using some scrap and some silver level and melting it all together to create an undulating mess of silver. And here you can see me burning it to an inch of its life. But it kind of looks effective. Now for one of the most underrated tools in a workshop, a pin vise. I'm using it to hold the cloud as I file it, and this is another advantage of having that pin soldered on the back. Holding one of these clouds in my hands would be really difficult without having that post in the pin vise. I'm taking the corners off the cloud and just getting a nice puffy shape, and using some rubber wheels to kind of refine the shape a little bit more, smooth it out. Here's this really rough textured silver as well and I'm cutting that into different kind of mountain valley shapes and creating a nice interlocking piece. Spend some time cleaning up the back of the piece in preparation for soldering. I want so many pieces to be soldered on so I make sure the surface is perfectly clean and well fluxed. And you can see I have all the pieces prepped here and all my little pieces of solder ready to attach in order to sweat solder the pieces onto the pendant in the correct location.
Up next I created a bale using a pear shaped mandrel. I'm now creating the holes for the rivet pins to pass through. I wanted to create a very three-dimensional piece. So some of the clouds are soldered on the back plate and some of them are going to be riveted hovering above the other clouds, layered and textured like you'd see clouds in the sky. One of those annoying things is soldering on a bale just a little bit off center. So what I do is I take my time with my dividers and mark a little line for each side of the bale so I know the precise location where it's going to be soldered. And I set it up here in my GRS soldering station. It has two third hands built in and it really allows me to locate everything just perfectly. But even at that you can see I'm using my pick as a little kind of lifting tool to hold the pendant in the exact correct location. After all the soldering is finished, I now take my time cleaning all the surfaces, removing any scratches, marks and trying to restore the luster of the silver back again and I'm using different tools, files, rubber wheels. I turn my attention now to the stone setting. I'm filing the top down to get the height for the stone just correct. And then I also use a bar to just chamfer the top edge, give it a little bit of an angle and lighten that bulkiness off the top edge. Here I am coming in with a tool and just pressing north, south, west and east and pushing that metal over the lovely moonstone cabochon and closing any gaps around the edge. So here is my top tip for this stone setting. I'm using a black rubber cylinder. It's an abrasive rubber cylinder. And using a diamond file, I shape a concave shape on the end of it. And then I can place that over this cabochon. And the concave shape stops the abrasive from touching the stone, but cleans up that outer edge of the stone setting. You can see I've done one in a finer um, blue rubber wheel there, or rubber cylinder as well. Now on to oxidizing the piece. Really wanted to create a nice dark stormy kind of contrast to the piece. Neutralizing the oxidizing solution with some water and cleaning it off. And now I'm going to scrub some of that back using abrasive wheels and just create drama in the corners and the low points. And I continued the same treatment on the little clouds that are yet to be riveted on. I use Renaissance wax to protect the patina and also increase the intensity of the dark colours, just using a cotton bud to rub in the wax into all the different corners. These type of rivets are quite nice to do. It's just a matter of putting the posts through, leaving them just slightly proud, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a millimetre proud of the back plate. And now I drill with a very fine drill bit into that post and create a little tiny hole, almost making it look like a tube. And 
once I flare the outside of the tube over into that little recess I've made with the with the ball burr previously and just doming that wire that has been formed into a tube over a burnisher makes quick work of tidying up these rivets it helps me to also tighten the rivets a little bit as well and there is the final piece thanks for watching and I'd love if you could maybe hit that like button and maybe leave a comment let me know what you thought thanks very much